We've got PMQ's Unpacked coming up at 12 o'clock. Now, normally, we'd have Tim Shipman here. It's on. The cameras are on. Oof. Good morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sit up straight. Uh, normally, we'd have Tim Shipman here to do PMQ's Unpacked, but he's not here. So... As a very, as I'm very excited by this. We've got actual Jane Garvey and actual Fee Glover off of Afternoons on Times Radio. I love the idea. How the tables have turned. That uh, that we're actual people as opposed to what? Rather well, impressionists. Yes. <laughs> Mere. Or, or, um, well, by Thursday, that'd be quite handy, wouldn't yeah. it? Holograms. You're like yes. ABBA-style holograms of the two yeah. of you. Or maybe we could just appear as dirigibles. Massive, great big. Dir dirigibles? They're those huge inflatables. Big inflatables. Oh, are they? Yeah. I don't know about I don't know what they are. Yes, you do. Do you remember the Donald, Donald Trump dirigible? No. You know, they always blow in the wind, those huge, great well, like big creatures. Yes, the exactly like, that. Oh, OK, fine. Yeah. Anyway, Fee, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm all right. Good. And Jane? Yes, also good, thank you. Good. I'm a bit nervous yeah. about this, actually. Matt. No, I was because in, your, in your, your many stellar years on the wireless, have either of you done the PMQ's programme? I've never been Prime Minister. Oh, um, no. Uh, have we? No. Only no. a matter of time, Jane. You've done, yeah. done, done breakfast, drive, yes. woman's hour. Mm. Yes. And and some political programmes. Yeah. You might be too young to remember Sunday service, a groundbreaking was triptych superb. of uh, Charlie Whelan, Andrew <laughs> Pierce, and me. And you. What's that? That sounds like a five live. <laughs> it was a five live. It was a dangerous experiment. How yeah. long did that last for? Well, uh, it went hours. on. No, it went on for quite a long time. I think I did it for about three years. Oh, right, okay. But uh, but they were good together. They were good together in a kind of, you know, oil and vinegar way. <laughs> do you think they keep in touch, those two? I'm sure they do. Yeah, they probably do, actually, <laughs> fairness, don't they? Yeah. What about you? Uh, what, what's the closest you've got, Jane? Uh, well, my sister used to work in the House of Parliament. Did she? Uh, yeah, she did, back in the 1990s. So uh, she worked uh, for a peer of the realm. And uh, so these are the days quite lack security. Mm. I mean, I don't think they'd really invented passes and things like yeah. that. So um, I used to meet her for lunch and we'd have a very nice, yeah, good gander, good look at things, yeah. I never actually went live to PMQs, but I've, I've been in the House of Commons. I was going to say, you should do that, but it might be a bit tight for you to get back. Now it would be a bit tight, yeah. It would. But I'd love to see it, actually. Yeah, although the tube line's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, that's it? true. Yeah, you could, you could be, you'd be out by half, half twelve, you'd be back here, couldn't you? Easily. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one thing I don't I don't get to go and do that anymore, sit in the gallery. Oh, they did go this week. I went down and watched a bit of the Boris Johnson debate. When was the golden years of PMQs? I think You're it's... probably not old enough to remember, are you? Uh, I think Blair and Cameron were pretty good. Right. Although probably remembering that overly fondly mm. because of probably weeks where they were a bit dull. And, and in what sense was it good? I think uh, when you've got the leader of the opposition mounting an argument in quite a ballsy, funny way, and then the Prime Minister responds in kind, and it's a good, yeah. you know, and by the end of I mean, I suppose from a journalist perspective, you sort of want a story by the end of it. You either want the opposition to have found out something, which mm. they, that's always good when, the, when they sort of go, I've got a piece of paper, I've got some mm. figures, or, you know. And do you think that they were just genuinely better at lifting it off the page? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And also responding to each other, you know, thinking on your feet. Yeah. Mm. Which uh, I'm not sure Keir Starmer or Rishi Sunak are terribly good at. Do you remember, um, and it's back in the mists of time now, Liz Truss's first <laughs> Prime Minister's questions? Where, first and last. Well, I think, but didn't she actually perform rather better than some people were expecting? Yes. And she answered questions. Yeah. Sometimes just with She's yes. She's not engaged with them, yeah. 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 Uh, which a lot of people thought was um, revolutionary. Revolutionary yeah. and a sign of good things coming. Yeah. Um, anyway, it wasn't. Then she be. also said, I'm a fighter, not a quitter. Oh, yeah, well, which is unforgivable. And then she had two fights and she quit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, and actually, one of the things, it was something that she said at PMQs, which sort of led to her downfall when she said there would be no spending cuts. And that was like her one get out after mm. the, having dropped the bombshell of her mini budget, was there was a suggestion, well, actually, if she announced some spending cuts to sort of pay for it, then that might have assuaged the money men. That yeah. actually her sums added up. And having ruled that out at PMQs, that was a real, you know. Mm. What's happening with guilts today? Do we know? <laughs> what, my personal guilt? <laughs> well, my personal guilt's mainly to do with eating this cinnamon roll, yeah, which has taken me just... more than an hour. But you've got the centre of it left. Yeah. I I don't know. Know how you well, that's the gilly bit that you're named after, isn't it? Apparently so. Apparently yeah. so. Would you like to hear from some of the people who are watching on YouTube? Yes, please. Enormously so. Uh, Richard, Jane and Fee, Radio Legends. Mm. There we are. 
Was that it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd hope for Do a bit more. flooding in. Uh, no, greeting some Guildford. Maybe wish you would go AWOL again, says Ross. Assuming he comes out of hiding. On second thoughts, maybe we're better off where he's hiding or applying for his green card. Uh, Richard is in Sunny Fleet, which is nice. He's always... He stopped me once outside a shop and asked for a selfie. He comes up every week, he does. doesn't he? He's very yeah. enthusiastic. He's a Richard. super fan. Uh, Tom is checking in from the Barney South Coast. Richard's in sunny Plymouth. Stuart says it's sunny in Edinburgh. Uh, good morning from Uckfield. Uh, Kate says, love them. I think that's... Oh, that's good. Hello, Kate. Uh, Richard says, hope Fee remembers to get the milk. She's written that on her hand. Oh, my goodness. Well, well thank just, goodness it's only it's, that. It's only that day, yes. <laughs> well, it's, uh, do you know what? It's not, actually. So i just cross out the one underneath. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joy with being on the cameras, you see. Uh, <laughs> Tim is in Barcelona. Peter is in Abbots Langley. Uh, um, greetings from a south and cold, uh, rainy Cape Town, says David. Oh. So there we are. What do you think might come up at PMQs today? Cost ja- of living. Jane, yeah. Cost of living. Inflation. Um, yeah. Inflation. Mortgages, interest rates, mortgages. Interest rates. High cost of rent. It was really interesting yesterday. There was an article on the BBC website, which I think was the most read at one point. I had actually quite a large chunk of the day. And it was just about a young couple um, who had, I think, 1,700 quid a month to spend on rent. Couldn't find anywhere. Wow. And that, uh, it just really illustrates what so many people are. If, you had that, if you're spending that on a mortgage, you're going to have a massive house. Just, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. The whole thing That's is crazy. just crackers. In fact, I should tell you, we've got Keir Starmer on the show tomorrow. Oh, yes. have you? Yeah. yeah. Mm, what will your opening question be? Uh, good, good. Why don't, good. We, why don't we workshop that? <laughs> Let's workshop what that. What should be my first question to Keir Starmer? Po- post it on the, uh, I think, how are you might not, I think we can aim a bit better than that, Aina. How are you? Aina Orr, so how are you? You well? <laughs> you look well. <laughs> You could go in with the Jonathan Ross style. You look great, being at the gym. <laughs> That's always his opening, wasn't it? <laughs> Lorraine, Kelly, Lorraine Kelly always says, You're looking great. Just do that. Yeah, shall I do that? Yeah. You look you you look sensational, Keir Starmer. What's your secret? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if we can get all that. Uh, very good. Well, it's coming up. Uh, get on the YouTubes. Uh, share it with your friends as well, because this should be a good one. Jane and Fee analysing in real time <laughs> what is happening. I've suddenly realised what we've signed up to here. <laughs> right, okay. Well, this is good because I come on your show every week at four o'clock and yeah, I've no idea what I'm doing. You know about... I mean, it's not that we don't know, you understand. It's but just, this is your area of expertise. Yeah. We're you generalists. Know. We are. Yeah. No, you're not. You're, you're professional journalistic broadcasters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Jane doesn't know what to do when a man's nice to her, Matt. You've been really self back in. I don't know how to compose my features at all. <laughs> Looking what blank. have you, just for the benefit of people uh, planning their afternoons, what oh, have yeah. you got on your show this afternoon? Oh, well, a colossus. Got a oh, I know who you've got. Yes. Who have we got, Jane? Peter. Andre. Well, what more do you want? So just, that for, just for that for two hours. He'll have views on levelling up and much else besides. Well, he came on and did If I Ruled the World once and he, he um, uh, dropped a story in. He said he discussed with number 10 the idea that we should all have siestas. Right, well, of course, we talked about that yesterday, didn't Yes, we? that's scientific. Yeah, because it's happening. Yeah, Keep Peter Andre's big. big on the siesta, apparently. And he's, he's got a friend who works in Downing well, Street. Let's hope he's not asleep when we call him at half <laughs> three. <laughs> be prime nap time. Is he coming in? No, oh, sadly, no. he's on Zoom. I mean, I think that's for his own safety. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping his top on. <laughs> yeah, it's one of our riders. <laughs> 8722, start your message with the word Times if you want to get in touch. Uh, you can email me, Matt, at Times.radio. Get on the YouTubes. It's Jane Garvey and Fee Glover analysing PMQs Unpacked next. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio. It's 12 o'clock. I'm Matt Shirley. This is Times Radio. In a moment, PMQ's unpacked, but first a look at the headlines this lunchtime. The Chancellor's told people to be patient with high inflation, which remains at 8.7%. Jeremy Hunt says the Bank of England's plan to increase interest rates to low inflation will work. Interest rates expected to go up tomorrow, leading to higher mortgages. Vladimir Zelensky has urged Western leaders to help rebuild his country, speaking via video link to the Ukraine Recovery Conference. He said, when we build Ukraine, we'll build freedom. Banging sounds have been heard underwater near to the Titanic wreckage in the North Atlantic, where five people on board a submersible are missing. Initial investigations have so far been unsuccessful, but even if it is found, it's still going to require huge efforts to bring it to the surface. 
And Sir Keir Starmer is planning to fill the House of Lords with more Labour peers to make the numbers more equal and prevent a potential Labour government being hampered in the legislation process. 22% of the House of Lords currently are Labour supporters, less than the number of crossbench peers. Uh, there's more on all of that online now. We'll have a full news and support round at half past. But now, live on Times Radio and the Times Radio YouTube channel, it's time for this. PMQ's Unpacked on Times Radio. Unpacking the politics and cutting through the crossfire. Order, order. I call Matt Chorley. And Jan Kit crank it and leave the knob on. I just didn't think good things could get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you've got your own jingle. That's amazing. <laughs> there, there we are. Can I take that home with me? Well, a very good afternoon to you. It is PMQ's Unpacked with Jane Garvey and Fee Glover off of the Afternoons on Times Radio and the Off Air podcast yes. and Instagram Jane, sensations. Jane and Fee. Jane and Fee on the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Mike's been in touch saying, I'm looking forward to PMQ's with Jane and Fee, but I admit I find it very confusing when these mashups happen. It's like when Boy George turned up on the A team. Yes, it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> What do you normally do? You normally watch it. Do you normally listen? Do you normally I, I, ignore it I'm entirely? Quite a faithful listener, actually. Of of how we do. Yes, it. sometimes I even listen to you doing it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always listen to you, uh, and I listen on the tube on the way in. Yeah. So as as long as you can say all of the best things by about twenty three minutes past twelve, I'm all right. Well, it's a good job that you're both here because I've got an extra job to do today because uh, Patrick McGuire's on his way to Glastonbury. Uh, Lama Spirit is off on holiday. You really were desperate, weren't so, you? No, no, so I'm writing... Is this meant to make us feel no, good, Jane? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm writing the Red Box email, oh, yeah. PMQ's email. So I, I obviously did Red Box for four or five years, uh, thought, thought all those days were behind me, but after the show today, I've got to write an email all about PMQ, so we'll, we'll, we'll sort of compose that together. Oh, OK. Well, have you spoken to our agent about that? <laughs> I don't think so, Matt. <laughs> uh, so, yes, yeah, if Times subscribers can go to the times.co.uk forward slash red box uh, and sign up now. So I'll be in your inbox later. There'll be no escape uh, from us. Uh, if inflation comes up, what do you think Keir Starmer's first question should be? Ooh, Jane. Well, um, thank you very much. for. Well, I suppose, when is the medicine going to work? Yeah. Is the only question to That's ask about question. it, isn't it? Fee? Well, I think he would be wise, wouldn't he, to plough into uh, the number of years that a Tory government has been in charge of fiscal policy in this country and the number of promises that have been made and the ever-extendable rule that seems to be used uh, to measure their success. Because there's, you know, there is heaps of ammunition there. And also the fact that uh, Rishi Sunak promised to halve inflation. Yes, at the beginning of the it's year. a key pledge. We're halfway through the year and he's not halfway to halving it. Yep. So... Are we ready? We've got him. Yeah, we can go. Here we go. Brace yourselves. Great. Adopt the brace position. We're going live to the House of Commons. It's question number one from Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister and his comments about the Windrush generation who've contributed so much to our country and to the armed forces in this week and all weeks? Um, and Glenda Jackson's passing leaves a space in our cultural and political life that can never be filled. She played many roles with great distinction, passion and commitment. Academy Award winning actor, campaigning Labour MP and an effective government minister. We will never see talent like hers again. Yeah. Mr Speaker, one of the Prime Minister's own MPs says Britain is facing a mortgage catastrophe. Does he agree with her? Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, can I start by joining the Honourable Gentleman in his uh, tribute to Glenda Jackson? Uh, and Mr Speaker, it's also right that we do support those with the mortgages, and this is why the absolute right economic priority is to halve inflation. Because inflation is what is driving interest rates up, inflation is what erodes people's savings and pushes up prices and ultimately makes them poorer. Now, this is why, a long time before I had this job, I highlighted the importance of tackling inflation. It's why that I said it is never easy to root out inflation, but we will take the difficult and responsible decisions to do so. It's an approach that the IMF has strongly endorsed in their words and describing our actions as decisive and responsible. Right, let's pause it there. Okay. Well, there wasn't actually an answer to the question, was there? No. no. 
and there was a reference. You're going to, to point out volume. that every time. It's Sorry. To... <laughs> well, I just thought I'd just stay to the obvious. Carry on, please. No, well, it's very no, I always think you know when you go for a quote, uh, you know, from somebody like the IMF, mm. and you pick out decisive and responsible. You know, if you're just an average punter and you're going to see a West End show, and it <laughs> says at the bottom, entertaining and whatever it responsible. is, responsible. Yes, yeah. and you always wonder mm, what else did the report say. Yeah, so yeah, I think. Yeah that's a slightly weak kind of somebody else says we're being decisive and responsible rather than this is the evidence yeah, yeah, that yeah. we are because that's the whole point, isn't it? Nobody is feeling. So Keir Starmer raised this quote that Britain's heading for a mortgage catastrophe. That's from the Tory MP Lucy Allen, who can, who's criticised the complacency of the Bank of England. She's also the MP who's now she's standing down as the MP for Telford, saying that oh, the Tory so party... She, she's free to say it. Yes, the Tory party doesn't care about places like Telford anymore. She's do you, do you think it matters? And, I, you know, I, I've no... I'm not, this is not a personal attack on Rishi Sunak, but the fact that he is so wealthy and that even people with quite a cursory knowledge of, awareness of political stuff mm. know that yeah and then you hear him not being dismissive exactly but just saying yes yes no, you know. um and people think well he he'll just never know the pain yeah. he's not lying awake at night thinking what are we going to do next month and actually uh this wasn't someone from the times but someone who was on the trip when Rishi Sunak went to america a couple of weeks ago mm. uh he was asked on the plane have you ever had a mortgage and he sort of waffled on about more, you know, the, the concept of mortgages and was sort of pressed on it and got quite prickly before he admitted that he had, at some point, had one. Right. But, I mean, that, that's the difference between somebody who may have, you know, like Keir Starmer, may or may not have a mortgage now, but it has had one at some point. Yeah. And just someone who's so rich and has been so rich, you know, to, to the fact that there's even a question of whether or not he even knows what it's like to have a mortgage or to pay the rent or whatever. He's probably... Um, uh, a bit problematic. Uh, he also, Rishi Sunak touched on, he said, I, before, long before I got this job, I warned about the importance of inflation. I think he means last summer right. when uh, well, he was... It is a long time ago in politics at the moment. When he was going through the leadership contest with Liz Truss, he warned, you know, we need to get a grip on inflation mm. and your plan will crash the economy. Mm. So he was half right. And they're calling in the banks, aren't they? On, is it on Friday? Yeah. Uh, well, more important than that, they called in Martin Lewis today. That's how serious it is. Yeah, well, yeah, but well, that is people... the person you need to call the first. Money I think saving expert, call him. Martin <laughs> yeah. Lewis has been in to see uh, Jeremy Hunt. And do we know what happened? Uh, they had a very well. Martin Lewis tweeted a picture of it and then said it was a private meeting. Um... Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of those private meetings uh, you tweet a picture of. Yeah, he said, uh, just left Downing Street after being invited to an urgent private meeting with Jeremy Hunt to discuss mortgages. I can't detail the discussion, but rest assured, all the points I've been making about the need for banks not to ramp margins and proper forbearance were made. Right. It's tough for the banks, though, isn't it? A phrase mm. that I didn't think that I would ever yeah. find myself saying, because if they're going to uh, get some of the blame and be expected to come up with some of the solutions, that's not quite how. But also they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. If the Bank Economics of England puts works. up interest rates, they're yeah. supposed to put up the mortgage. That's the whole point, to squeeze people's income so they stop spending, which brings yeah. down inflation. Mm. So to expect them to have a solution yeah. when they're part of the political process does seem a little bit... Shh. Right, well, there we are. That was question number one. Let's go back, see what Keir Starmer's got next. Is question number two from Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, I realise the Prime Minister spent all week saying he doesn't want to influence anyone or anything. <laughs> it was certainly keeping to that with his answer. He, he knows very well the cause of the mortgage catastrophe. Yeah. Yeah. 13 years of economic failure and a Tory kamikaze budget which crashed the economy and put mortgages through the roof. So will the Prime Minister tell us how much the Tory mortgage penalty is going to cost the average homeowner? Yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker as, as ever, the Honourable Gentleman isn't aware of the global macroeconomic situation. But let me do, but substantively, substantively, well, substantively, what I, what, let me tell him and the House what we are doing to support those with mortgages. We have deliberately and proactively increased the generosity of our support for the mortgage interest scheme. We have also established a new FCA communal duty which will protect people with mortgages, for example, moving them onto interest-only mortgages or lengthening mortgage terms. And we have spent tens of billions of pounds supporting people with the cost of living, particularly the most vulnerable. But that is the difference between us, Mr Speaker. While he is always focused on the politics, we are actually just getting on and doing the job. Oh, dear. <laughs> It's getting a trifle repetitive, isn't it? 
stand by because there's four more to go. Uh, Fee, a point to you for saying uh, we're going to get 13 years of Tory failure. Yes, there it is. and there it was. And there it was. And, and there it was. The kamikaze budget, we've not had that for a while. Yeah. But, but um, also the response was just a little bit, we've heard it before, wasn't it? Yeah, Where, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a global thing. Uh, which uh, harks back to what Alistair Darling and Gordon Brown said for years and years and months and months and weeks and weeks after their financial crash, wasn't it? It's nothing to do with us. It's a global problem. Yeah. But you don't feel that in your personal pocket. Yeah, I'm not sure the best answer is uh, he just doesn't get the global macroeconomic situation. <laughs> It'll be talked about in bus stops up and down the land, won't it? Yeah. Um, the phrase Tory mortgage penalty. Doesn't work. Well, I, I'm oh, just going to say, it, oh, well, I wonder, you see. On, I think maybe that's there's your camera campaign poster. Yeah. Uh, Tory, a Tory mortgage penalty equals for the average household, of course he wasn't going to say, was he? But, no. I mean, I, I would do that poster. I think I'd go bombshell. bombshell. Bombshell's better than penalty. Penalty to mortgage, mortgage. The word penalty is such a Keir Starmer sort of a word. So, so you'd penalty. go Tory mortgage bombshell. bombshell. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, or, or take the Tory, uh, what was her name, uh, Lucy Allen, what did she call it? Catastrophe. Tory mortgage catastrophe. The Tories have cost you. That's or maybe it just would be the Tories have cost you. Yeah. Insert number of yeah. yeah okay. Tory mortgage bill. Uh, it's hard to see at the moment why anybody with a mortgage would vote Conservative at the next election, isn't it? Uh, well, I think it's fair to say at the moment the polls suggest that nobody with or without a mortgage is, going to is currently voting. planning to vote. But hey, uh, things change. Th th things could change. Maybe they will change with question number three. Well, let's see. Jane Garvey and Fiegel over here for PMQ's Unpacked. Let's go back to the House of Commons. It's uh, question number three from Keir Starmer. Let's test that, because the, the question he refuses to answer, he actually knows the, the answer to this question, is £2,900 extra. That's the cost to the average family of the Tory mortgage penalty. Now, he was warned by experts about this as long ago as autumn last year, but he either didn't get it, didn't believe it, or didn't care, because he certainly didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. And when I raised this a couple of months ago, he had the gall to stand at that dispatch box and say he was delivering for homeowners. Yeah. <laughs> How is an extra £2,900 a year on repayment delivering for homeowners? Yeah. Well, so, Mr Speaker, now, let, let's, just, let's just look at the facts. Let's look at the facts. Because he talks about interest rates. He talks about interest rates. Perhaps your gentleman could explain why interest rates are at similar levels in the United States, in Canada, in Australia and New Zealand. Why they're at the highest level in Europe that they've been for two decades, Mr Speaker. That's why it's important that we have a plan to reduce inflation. But in contrast, what do we hear from the honourable gentleman? He wants to borrow an extra £28 billion a year. That would make the situation worse. He wants to ban new supplies of energy from the North Sea. That would make the situation worse. And, and he wants to give in to unions unaffordable pay demands. That would make the situation worse. Mr Speaker, he doesn't have many policies, but the few that he does have all have the same thing in common. They're dangerous, inflationary, and working people would pay the price. <laughs> so it's terrible now. But you just watch. You just wait. It could be, it could be worse. Yeah. There's a, there's a slogan. Put Ooh. that on your poster. It nearly and said union barons, but then avoided yeah, I know. it. We yeah. Working people would pay the price because they get a pay rise negotiated through their unions. That mm. doesn't doesn't add up to. And the problem of quoting international things, Matt, is uh, just, you, you know, we're not living in Vancouver or Boston or but Paris. But also, uh, it may well be that Keir Starmer makes this point, but if you look at the league table on inflation... Our eight point. I'm looking at. I don't know this. What's this website I'm looking at? Assuming this is correct, uh, the only major countries with more, higher inflation are than us are Turkey with forty percent and Argentina with one hundred and fourteen. So we're on eight point seven. Italy on seven point six. Australia on seven. Your area is on six point one. Uh, similar in Germany, Netherlands five point one in France. Canada's on four point four. United States is on four. So it's all right for Rishi Sunak to say well, our interest rates are the same. So why aren't they having the same? impact on inflation in the states it's because they don't have they don't have an energy problem is that right i think so so how do we explain it why i mean i'm always outraged perhaps in a rather unpleasant way about italy doing better than us it but just also, seems completely wrong italy specifically the, the well, there's just something about, they just seem so poorly organized 
<laughs> I just don't understand it. <clears throat> Eight seven trouble two. Just start your message with the word times if you are Italian. Maybe you're maybe you're watching. Was anyone watching along? If you're on the YouTube channel and you're well, watching in Italy, well, they wouldn't be, would they? Because they're so disorganised. They they'll, they'll be logging on in an hour's the time. time and wondering they won't have what, a clue. Or they'll, they'll be having be lunch, s- sitting around making their fresh pasta. <laughs> mm. Oh, how lovely! <laughs> You've got your cinnamon roll, you're all right. Well, I'm still plowing my way through it. You know, the thing is, I always want, if I'm honest, I want Keir Starmer to be better and punchier than he is because there is, there's an open goal there, isn't there, week in, week out at the moment. And, he, I mean, maybe he'll do better in the next couple of questions, but he never... Where's the fire in his belly? I know we've discussed this before. I, I, want, to see, I want to see more of it. More passion, please. More passion. Well, let's find out. We're halfway through now, everyone. Right. Mm. We go back to the House of Commons. <laughs> Is it, we're over the hump of it now. It's almost oh, okay. over. Yeah, right, we're getting, yeah. we're getting oh, through. I'm enjoying it. We're getting it. through. Getting through. Uh, right, well, let's go back to the House of Commons. Listening on Times Radio, watching on the YouTube channel. Let us know if you're in Italy. Uh, this is question number four from Keir Starmer. Seriously? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, it's Lindsay Hall. I don't Hall. think we need any more, do we? No. Keir Starmer. Oh, we're taking off the Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the has a keen interest in the mortgage market in California, but I'm talking about mortgage holders here. And whilst his government is consumed in law-breaking chaos and division, working people are paying the price. This morning, I spoke to James in Selby. He's a police officer, working hard to keep people safe every day. The Tory mortgage penalty is going to cost him and his family £400 more each and every month. That's nearly £5,000. He told me this morning, they may not want to hear this, he told me this morning that they've decided to sell their house, to downsize, and he's just told his children they're going to have to start sharing bedrooms. Why should James and his family pay the cost of the Prime Minister's failure? Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I hope when the Honourable Gentleman was talking to James, he explained that his economic policies would make James' situation worse, Mr. Speaker. And it's not just... It's not just me saying that, Mr Speaker. The Independent, the Independent Institute of Fiscal Studies says his policy of never-ending debt and borrowing would damage James because it would increase inflation and drive up interest rates, leaving James and everybody else in this country poorer, Mr Speaker. The IMF has said that our plan prioritises not what is politically easy but what is right for the British people. That is what responsible economic leadership looks like, Mr Speaker. I'm enjoying Penny Mordaunt, who's sitting next to the Prime Minister and looking supportive in a sphinx-like <laughs> sort of way. Well, we know she can do that for hours. That's as quite well. a... Uh, mm. It's a bit roomy. Roomy, actually, on the bench mm. beside him. Um, <coughs> excuse me, you've got... yeah. I think Jeremy Hunt on one side and Penny Morden on the other. Yeah, yeah, she's wielding her sword of truth. Penny Morden spoke at the do I was at last night. And? Uh, she, I actually missed it because oh. uh, um, we were watching the cricket. But uh, apparently it was quite funny. Quite funny. That's what I'm told. And that from a man as richly <laughs> apparently gifted I got, as yourself. Apparently I got a name check in the speech, but nobody <sighs> can remember the details, so I don't know if it was good or bad. Nobody can remember the details. Is it quite a fresh evening? <laughs> they did run out of drink. They ran out of drink. They, and I hadn't been there very long, and I got uh, my ear bent by Mark Harper, the transport secretary who turned mm. up, and uh, he seemed to think it was my fault that there was no alcohol. Right, a succession of names have been dropped during <laughs> um, during the telling of that anecdote. So when you say that you were listening oh, to on, the you cricket... Can't, I, of all the names to drop, Mark uh, Harper... Mark Harper, no, listen, it works with me. <laughs> I'll be telling everyone I've met someone who's met Mark Harper. <laughs> Peter Andre will be impressed later <laughs> yeah, he on. Will be. Um, so we heard about we heard about James and Selby. Um, yes. uh, now four hundred quid a month. That, I mean, I I, t- I do think these examples are worth worth using because all of us can wrap our brains around that and think, okay, four hundred quid a month that would have an impact. But all the prime minister's got in his locker is just to say that James, it's going to be far far worse yeah. if people go out and vote Labour in what yeah. is it twelve months. And time. this quoting of yet more, uh, you know, independent, yeah. what was it, Institute of Fiscal Studies yeah. and the IMF back again, that isn't going to matter to James. And you're not going to remember those quotes, but you are going to remember James and the 400 quid a month. Now, here's a counter-argument, because we had this conversation earlier with um, Robert Crampton and Alice Thompson. Robert was saying, people need to take personal support. It's not the government's job to pay your mortgage. And when you take a mortgage, you are taking that... You know, it is a long-term thing. 
and you have to take responsibility for your mortgage. And, you know, the situation that... Jay Is it the government's job to help James so his kids don't have to have bunk beds? Well, I mean... We, course... we can sympathise with the situation, but should the government... Well, take on James's mortgage. I like the idea of the government possibly putting pressure on the banks um, yeah. who will reach out and mortgage lenders mm. to help those people who are going to be struggling. Yeah, I take the point that they, we all have a degree of... Of course we have a degree of personal responsibility. But we're in this situation because of the policies of mm. the current government. So to say they have no responsibility yeah. to people struggling, it seems incredibly mm. harsh to me. And would you have made a different decision about your family and buying a house... Uh, would you have thought, gosh, uh, what would happen if interest rates went to 6%, mm, yeah, 8% yeah. and 10% yeah. when you'd lived at a time when interest rates had been hovering around 2% for, you know, four or five years? Is, is you know, is, isn't the job of government also yeah. in harder times to be able to offer some kind of practical solution? And actually what will be interesting is because a lot of the mortgage experts we've spoken to say that there aren't loads of people in James's situation because the whole point of post the crash, 2007, 2008, if they were more mortgages, careful. they're more careful, yeah. they're more stress tested. Although you were getting a mortgage at 2%, they were stress tested to 7, 8, 9%. So in theory, although people, you know, will fill the pinch, you know, it might mean you don't, you know, get yeah. a new car or go they on holiday and all that. We won't see, because actually we didn't see a big spike in repossessions after the last crash because there were interventions and banks offered, you know, to remortgage or extend, mm -hmm. you know, periods and that sort of stuff. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting what Keir Starmer... What is Keir Starmer actually suggesting, apart from saying it's a terrible business, this? Well, what do you mean? What, what policies is yeah. he suggesting? What is he suggesting that the government should do? Well, something. Something. That, something must be yeah. done. Something's and he's had a little bit of a pop at the Californian mansion, hasn't yes, he? Which yes, is quite, yeah. which is Which, again, um, I mean, some people will get that reference, yes. but quite a lot of people won't. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say, I don't think Rishi Sunak's got a mortgage on his house in California. I, I suspect you might be right. <laughs> mm. yeah. Bold move, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do let me know if you think you're wrong. Uh, I don't think there were any Italians, although there were lots of people around the world watching on the YouTube. No no Italians. Well, that just proves James' point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very disorganised. How have they done that with their economy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were out celebrating their low inflation rate. Uh, right, let's go back uh, to the House of Commons now. PMQ is up with Jane Garvey and Fee Glover here on Times Radio. Let's go back. This is question number five from Keir Starmer. James and his family will have been listening to that Prime Minister. Yeah. Uh, and their plight should keep them awake at night because over the next few years, 7.5 million people are going to be in the same boat, exactly. all paying the Tory mortgage penalty. Exactly. Month after month after month. The situation is so dire that repossessions are already up 50%, a total betrayal of the idea that if you work hard, you'll get on. So what's the Prime Minister going to do to make sure more families don't lose their homes? Yeah. Mr Speaker, I know he's reading from his prepared script, but he failed to actually listen to the answer that I gave. Well, I, did, I did actually spell out in detail what we are doing, Mr Speaker. We've increased the generosity of support for mortgage interest scheme. We did that proactively in advance. We've also established a new FCA consumer duty that will protect borrowers, for example, by allowing them to extend their mortgage terms or switch to interest-only mortgages. And we have spent tens of billions of pounds supporting households with living costs. Those are the practical steps that we are taking to help James and other families who are facing these situations. But what I would say, because he mentioned mortgage arrears and uh, repossessions, I am pleased to say, Mr Speaker, they are actually running at a level today that is below when we entered the pandemic, Mr Speaker, because of the actions that we're taking. But more importantly than that, perhaps, Mr Speaker, is that they are also running three times lower than the level we inherited from the last Labour government. Ah, uh, the last Labour oh, government. Yeah. Answer so, all your questions, Matt. Yeah. yeah. That is interesting. Repossessions are three times lower than they were in 20... Before the pandemic. I'm just trying to look at the stats here. I, can't... I mean, there were basically very... I mean, ba huh. partly because during the pandemic there were no uh, repossessions, repossessions because right, they... Okay. Um, because uh, you couldn't, could you? Put them off. Yeah. Well, he's st certainly sticking to his theme, uh, Keir Starmer, isn't he? Um, we've definitely heard the phrase Tory mortgage penalty in every single question so far. Yeah. Do you think it's catching on? I just don't think it's very... I don't think it is very... Because the whole point... The way a phrase 
takes hold in politics. Quite often, actually, it, it, the best ones are the ones that they nick from focus groups. People keep saying, like, take back control was a big part of it. You know, that came from focus groups. I think the, uh, in, I think in 2015, the Tories kept hearing this stuff on mm. the doorstep about uh, Ed Miliband in uh, Alex Salmon's pocket. That, you know, so what you want to be doing is sort of repeating back to get Brexit done. Just get Brexit done. That's what people say. I'm just sick of it. Just get Brexit done. And so you, Tory. Tory mortgage penalty feels like the product of quite a long meeting. Yeah. And do they always have to be three words now? Is that just a a kind of proven uh, way of developing a slogan? Possibly. Because they all are, aren't they? Yeah, Stop yeah. the boats, all of that. Half inflation. Well, that's not... That's, that's Long-term <laughs> economic plan was one of the genius... <laughs> you can't count, James. One of the genius phrases, long-term economic plan, because it was an admission that their short-term economic plan hadn't worked. <laughs> during the five years of the coalition government. So it just became a long-term economic plan as they admitted they weren't going to balance the books for years. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think so far would be lifted out onto the main news bulletins later? Yeah. Where's the headline? I think that's... Uh, I think at the moment, uh, I would say it's unclear. I mean, at the moment, I'd say what Keir Starmer's done is he's, po he's inserted himself into the inflation story ahead of... Uh, the interest rates tomorrow, but I don't think he's got the top line. But also, no digs at uh, the Prime Minister for not turning up for the vote mm. on the Privileges Committee. I thought he might go in on that. Yeah. Because... Well, there was a tiny bit, was it? There was some vague... Rest what was the... Um, he doesn't not want to be influenced by anyone. I know the Prime Minister doesn't want to be... Doesn't want to influence Well, that's the only, the only... Mm. Yeah, Which was what he said as yeah. to why Again, he wouldn't say... Oh. You've got to th overthink it to get the reference. I mean, you've basically got to be a radio presenter to have been following that closely yeah. to, to know that it, on Monday, Rishi Sunak said he wasn't going to say whether or not he was going to vote mm. on the Boris Johnson things. He didn't want to influence on the outcome. Have I got time to ask you a big question yeah, before go we go on? So how different do you think Rishi Sunak would appear today in terms of his political stature if he had turned up for the vote on yeah. Monday an interesting and question. being present? I, I do wonder if he might be slightly kicking himself mm. because the fact that only seven voted against the report and those who spoke out in the Commons were a bit feeble. Yeah. And even those who spoke out, Leonici, Jacob B. didn't vote against it either. Uh, I think it would have looked quite smart now. If yeah, he'd so done if it. I'd been Zakir, I might have gone in with, are you a man or a mouse? You know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, yes. but nothing, we've had yeah. nothing. And actually, you know, I lead my party, he follows his, was one of uh, John, mm. uh, Tony Blair's lines yeah, against John Major. Line, weak, weak, weak is another one. You yeah. Know. It's interesting, we isn't haven't it? A, we haven't had a zinger for the history books yet. I'm afraid we haven't. But, but... The, there's still time. <gasps> yes. Here Grip we go. the table, everybody. This is the uh, peroration. Question number six from Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, I'm sure from the vantage point of his helicopter, everything might look fine. <laughs> but that's not the lived experience of those on the ground. After 13 years of economic failure across the country, people are paying the price of uncosted, reckless, damaging decisions by the Tory party. And even now, as mortgages go through the roof, the Prime Minister is planning to wave through honours and peerages for those who cause misery for millions. What does it say about this government that while working people are worrying about mortgage hike, paying the bills, even repositions, the Tory party is rewarding those guilty of economic vandalism. Yeah. Mr Speaker, no amount of personal attacks and petty yeah. point scoring can disguise the fact that the honourable gentleman does not have a plan for this country, Mr Speaker. He comes here every week to make the same petty points. We are getting on and delivering for this country. Yes, Mr Speaker, inflation is a challenge. That's why we are on track to keep reducing it. We are reducing waiting lists. We are stopping the boats. All while he is focused on the past, focused on the politics. It's all talk. Whereas from this government and from this Prime Minister, we deliver for the country. God, that's a swerve, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, they're delivering, um, except they're not. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but that's the Prime Minister. And um, that was a reference again to the honour system. I just need it to be clearer, Keir. He does talk slightly. He's still in court. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a lot of assumed yeah, knowledge going on there. A, a tremendous... I do think this is one of the biggest problems. I, it, actually, I would compare it to cricket. You know, and I, I enjoy cricket. I'm not against it, but I don't know my silly mid-on <laughs> from my silly point. From your silly mid-off. From my silly mid Yeah, I haven't got a clue. It's, again, huge amount of knowledge is assumed. Yeah. Uh, Sakia has got, there are so many options at the moment. Um, fire me up. And especially because we've had a week of visuals, haven't we? You know, on the social media, you can see the jingle and the mingle jingle and party mingle. Yeah. Why didn't he say that? You know, yeah. last weekend you could see a video. So for, you know, just as a punter, yeah. that's what's in your political head at the moment, isn't it? And you could pull all that together. Like, while, while the country was locked up, they were partying. While... Everyone's worried about mortgages, you're giving out gongs. You know, pull mm. it all yeah. to... But, yeah. Yes. He should ask us to go in and help him if and he's serious. saying rewarding those guilty of economic vandalism, it doesn't really add up because what we're seeing as punters is people being rewarded who weren't necessarily to do with making economic policy. They were people hanging around the edges, yeah. pushing... It's the fact they weren't making economic yes. policy. So if, that's if only just, they were doing something, so... That's not a really kind of uh, guided missile, The reason people are cross about Boris Johnson's honours is because it's for a bunch of nobodies mm. Uh, hangers on who played no part people in people who broke COVID yeah. rules yeah. that's yeah. what people are cross about they weren't even senior enough to cock up the economy no so no. why are they getting anything so that is a bit of a missed opportunity isn't it in a week of weeks I think uh, I think you might, might be right I've enjoyed I've enjoyed your your unpacking have you have you enjoyed it yes have you Fee I've loved it yes <laughs> there yes. is a poll running on the YouTube channel Right. Who would make a better Prime Minister? Mm. Jane Garvey or Fee Glover? Wow. Oh, no, that's a terrible poll. Well, um... It's currently split 52-48. No, oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> it is. It is. It's How many people have voted? Now. Eight. Dozens. <laughs> Dozens. Okay. Dozens. If you're on the YouTube channel, go on and have a look. I'm currently too busy, but I could I could do it on a Friday. Fee... And which day's good for you? Well, I think it would just work better if we if we shared. Job share. If yeah, we job, job share. Some people are saying that. Yep. Mm. And because we could just, you know, we could uh, flip over at exactly this time during the week, couldn't we? Yeah. Exactly. I think I'm much better at the end of the week, and I think you're much better at the beginning. Yeah, that does make sense. Fee, <laughs> you're currently narrowly ahead. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I don't want to, I don't want to cause friction. You won't. In the relationship. <laughs> I'll, no, pay for, no I'll, I'll pay for I'll pay for that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she really will. But it could change. There's still three minutes to vote, so it's all it's changing so, live. Can you remind me, Matt, seriously, yeah. how long now has Sir Keir Starmer been doing PMQs? Uh three years. Right. Yeah. He took over it because he took over in the pandemic, didn't he? In the first uh sort of tail end of the first lockdown, so like April April, I'm gonna say. Yeah. April twenty twenty. He still he still hasn't got it right. And I think Keir, uh, Rishi Sunak is odd in lots of settings. He's not very good making a speech. He gets a bit cross at press conferences. He's quite good at PMQs because he's clearly got nothing to say. But he sort of, you know, bowls through it and, you know. Yeah. Do you think he was prominent in Debsock at Winchester College and well, what's Oxford Debsock? Debating, Debating Society? Society? Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. know. No, well, I think... We didn't um, have one of those at my comprehensive. Yeah, I've not, uh, I've not been a member of one <laughs> myself. I was the secretary of our Debsock. <laughs> Were you? Does that mean you were allowed to speak or you just took the minutes? Uh, I did speak, actually. Did you? Yes, and I also took the minutes. And he yeah. hasn't stopped But I think you're right, actually, Max. I think sometimes uh, Rishi Sunak, and here's a cultural reference yes. uh, for those of our age, can look a little bit like the YTS Prime Minister, yeah. but actually he seems really comfortable yeah. when he is at the dispatch right, box in, in the way that quite often people who've had that kind of yeah, yeah, education... Yeah can do they they you know that that's their kind of place but he, to he be. definitely comes into his own more in the dispatch box than he does in in other settings anyway lovely to see you both you've got to go and prepare yes for peter listen to all of peter andre's back catalogue between now and three well that's uh both nice work if you can get it all of his hit <laughs> no, no that's that's very jane mean. garvey and fee glover thank so you I leave for my unpacking nuts for you or are you happy with the cinnamon roll? I'm still ploughing away through... I think it wouldn't mix the cashews and the cinnamon roll. When you finish, come and tell us what Mark Harbour was really like. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jane Garvey and Fee Glover will be here from three o'clock speaking to Peter Andre. Up next, executive producer Andrew's coming in. Ooh! He's been watching the rest of PMQ so that you don't have to. We'll do that next on Times Radio and on the Times Radio YouTube channel. But now let's get the very latest news from... Rachel Jewell. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio.
Thanks, Matt. Good afternoon. Sir Keir Starmer has asked at PMQs if Rishi Sunak agrees with one of his own MPs that Britain is facing a mortgage catastrophe. The Labour leader went on the attack over the cost of living, saying the cause is 13 years of economic failure. £2,900 extra. That's the cost to the average family of the Tory mortgage penalty. Now, he was warned by experts about this as long ago as autumn last year, but he either didn't get it, didn't believe it, or didn't care, because he certainly didn't do anything. And when I raised this a couple of months ago, he had the gall to stand at that dispatch box and say he was delivering for homeowners. The Prime Minister insists halving inflation is the right economic priority. Meanwhile, the Bank of England is widely expected to raise interest rates again tomorrow after inflation remained stagnant last month at 8.7%. It was predicted to drop to 8.4%. Underwater searches for a missing sub have so far proved fruitless despite the detection of banging sounds by sonar aircraft in the area. Five people on board the vessel are estimated to have enough air to last until tomorrow morning. The Prime Minister has announced a UK plan to support Ukraine's economy so it can recover from the war with Russia. It includes guaranteeing $3 billion of World Bank loans over the next three years. Showers breaking out more widely this afternoon with some of these turning heavy and locally thundery. In between any showers, there will be plenty of warm sunny spells, but across the Northern Isles, rain will slowly clear northeastwards. Jeremy Lieburn has the sports. England's Joe Root has moved back to the top of cricket's test batting rankings. The former skippers leapfrogged Ash's rivals, Manus Labashain and Travis Head, who he outscored in the first test defeat to Australia at Edgbaston. Root chipped in with a combined 164 runs in Birmingham, including an unbeaten century in the first innings. The second Ashes test starts a week today at Lords, with Australia, of course, 1-0 up. Meanwhile, Danielle Wyatt will earn her first test cap when England's cricketers take on Australia in an historic one-off women's Ashes test starting tomorrow. She's been named in the team for the five-day match at Trent Bridge. Lauren Filer will make her senior debut with Kate Cross and Sophie Eccleston also forming part of the bowling attack. One of English rugby's most recognisable stars is swapping sport for the classroom, at least today, as he launches a new education charity for the poorest children in Nigeria. Maro Itoje's family hail from the African nation, where 20 million children are out of school. The Pearl Fund will finance orphans, all those in extreme poverty, through their entire education and onto university or into business. The England star has told Times Radio who the charity will be helping and why. It's more than likely that they will not receive quality education if they haven't. It's more than likely they'll probably be forced to work prematurely. They may be forced to beg on the street as a child. More than likely that they will continue to be in this cycle of poverty. And British number one Katie Bolter and five-time singles champion Venus Williams have been given wild cards for this year's Wimbledon. Five Brits, including Liam Brodie and Ryan Penniston, have also been given an entry to the men's competition. The tournament begins in just under two weeks. There's more on all these stories on the Times website and app. This is Times Radio. Is inflation bursting your retirement bubble? At RBC Bruin Dolphin. Our advice is focused on putting wind back in sails, repairing burst bubbles, and steering your investment plans towards a more certain future. To speak to a financial advisor, search RBC Bruin Dolphin. Good decisions follow smart advice. Capital and any income from it is at risk. Technology is always advancing, and with that comes progress. But just how secure are your devices? ESET provides proven protection for both home and businesses with a wide range of antivirus and cybersecurity solutions so you can relax knowing you're covered wherever you are. Rated excellent on Trustpilot. When technology enables progress, ESET is here to protect it. ESET Digital Security. Progress. Protected. For all the breaking news and the latest in culture and entertainment, listen to Mariella Frostrup, Monday to Thursday afternoons from 1 on Times Radio. Across the UK, on DAB Digital Radio, on the free Times Radio app and via your smart speaker. Matt Chorley on Times Radio. 
Very good afternoon to you, Matt, on your Times Radio. Uh, Jane Garvey and Fee Glover have now left the studio. They're off to do their lunges before they're on air at three o'clock. Uh, but uh, watching PMQ's The Rest uh, so that we didn't have to, this is very exciting, executive producer Andrew <laughs> has come into the studio. Uh, when was the last time you were on the radio? Um, 2011. Right. But that was, um, I used to do a bit of reporting on Parliament for the, um, for the other, other place. Right. Uh, but uh, never live. So this never is, a, the this is a wildly ambitious. Y- you're aware move. of the rules about swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of them once or twice. Yeah, very good. Uh, so, uh, who are we started with? So uh, it was yet more stat attack once we got um, <laughs> off the um, front bench exchanges. But I think, as is traditional when uh, Lara Spirit is here, we should start with uh, the SNP leader at Westminster, Stephen Flynn. Hey. Mr Speaker, in in February the Prime Minister told this year House that borrowing costs are back to where they should be. In March he boasted we are on track to have inflation by the end of the year. And in May he then said economic optimism is increasing. Well, given the dire economic reality of today, is it not now clear that he's taken his honesty lessons from Boris Johnson? Uh, Well, Mr Mr. Speaker, the the Honourable Gentleman also failed to mention that not just the Bank of England, not just the OBR, not just the OECD, but also the IMF, all of them have upgraded their growth outlook for the United Kingdom economy this year. Uh, Whilst he and others were predicting that this country would enter a recession, the actions of this government have meant that we have so far averted that, and we continue to be on track to keep reducing inflation, because that is the right economic priority. Can I just say, I want people to be a little bit more cautious on what they say. This is the present serving Prime Minister. The danger will it could be misled in the way that it was put. Stephen Flynn. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, Are listening to the there? Prime Minister's answer, I don't think he quite up. grasps the reality of the economic situation facing households across yeah, these yeah, aisles. Yeah, yeah. No, How could he? But it doesn't need to be like this. It didn't need to be like this. Yeah, because mortgage deals in Ireland, they're not sitting in excess of 6%, they're around about 4.5%. Yeah. Inflation yeah. in the euro area, that's not sitting at 8.7%, it's sitting at closer to 6%. Yeah, yeah. Britain yeah. is yeah. broke. Yeah. Now, seven yeah. years yeah. after their EU referendum, will he finally admit that it was Brexit that broke it? Yeah. But, Mr Speaker, again, I don't think the Honourable Gentleman was paying attention earlier. Interest rates in this country are at similar levels to they are in America, in Canada, in Australia and in New Zealand, Mr Speaker. The rise in inflation and interest rates is a global phenomenon, but that's why early I set out that it was the right economic priority to have to bring inflation down. That's what this government would do. But that requires, Mr Speaker, that requires difficult and responsible decisions. That's what leadership looks like. I don't think the SNP will ever do the same thing. God, there was a lot of numbers, wasn't there? I started writing them down and then I gave up. Yeah, I'm not sure we're learning much, really. I mean, obviously there is a, you know, they're both right, Um, you know, interest rates in this country are similar to other Western countries, but uh, inflation is higher here than it is in the yeah, Eurozone in yeah. the US. So, um, but, I, but I thought that was interesting. It's, it's obviously helpful for the opposition parties if they can remind people as much as possible about the previous Tory administrations. The whole point of, you know, Sunak and Hunt is that they are the steadying hand on the economic tiller. So as many mentions of the Boris Johnson years as possible, mm. you know, advisable for Stephen Flynn. Um, and then, I'm afraid to say, it just went on like that, really. <laughs> um, so, um, actually, interesting. Craig's been in touch. said, France and Germany subsidise the energy companies to keep their prices down. We subsidise people to pay the higher prices. That's why the energy price inflation didn't... The energy price rise didn't feed into their inflation, which is an interesting, possibly technical point, but it's quite interesting, that. Yeah, I suppose, also, we, I mean, there have been lots of years where PMQs are sort of centred around, um, you know, trading stats over economic yeah. growth, but... Um, I suppose when everybody is feeling the sort of impacts of um, inflation in their pockets quite so directly, whether this argument changes the dial for anyone listening. Also, it's interesting because essentially Rishi Sunak's, what he's trying to avoid saying is we need people to feel the pain so they stop spending to bring down inflation. But you can't quite say that because obviously it means, basically it's if it isn't hurting, it isn't working. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what the Times leader this morning points out, you yeah. know, and there's, there's sort of damned if you do, damned if you yeah. don't. Um, I mean, I thought the other question I've chosen out from the from a Tory backbencher is um, the former Cabinet Minister, Liam Fox, because he has a, as good a crack as he possibly can at sort of supporting the Prime Minister. So um, let's hear that now. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <clears throat> Since 2016, 
cumulative growth in Italy has been 4 per cent, in Germany has been 5.5 per cent, in the UK has been 6.8 per cent. In May last year, British exports to the European Union were not just the highest since Brexit, but since records began. The UK had the highest growth of any G7 country in both 2021 and 2022. The Eurozone is currently in recession. We are not. Is it not time we heard more good news talking Britain up? Well, my, uh, my right honourable friend, my right honourable friend is quite right to highlight the improvement in our economic outlook, and he's right to highlight the good positive news showing the strength in the underlying economy. And I know that he joins with me in saying that our economic priority right now must be to continue to bear down on inflation. But while we do that, we are putting the conditions in place to grow this economy. And as he said, unlike the party opposite, we won't talk Britain down, we will grow the country's jobs. Ah, oh, talking Britain down. <laughs> the doomsters and the gloomsters. The doomsters and gloomsters. I'd yeah. sort of forgotten that Liam Fox existed. Yeah, me of, too. You know, there was a time when he was all over everything. I confess, I, 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 when I was making notes, I said former Defence Secretary and then I had to have a little think about what else, but that might be... Trade? Yeah, international, international trade. trade exactly. And uh, uh, Theresa May? Exactly. And um, where's, is he standing? We don't know whether he's standing out of the next election. He's not on our list for the exit interviews. Get him on the list. So we don't think I so. feel bad. I feel like Lara Spirit would have chosen some more interesting uh, exchanges. <laughs> You've than only have, got but... what you've got to work with, Andrew. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We can't blame uh, we can't blame you for what the uh, the House of Commons people are commenting that you look different to how Lara normally looks. Yes, I do. That is correct. Uh, we should mention what we've got on the show tomorrow, shouldn't we? Oh yes, we've got the uh, Labour leader, Labour Keir leader Keir Starmer. Starmer. coming in. Exactly. If you've got an idea of what we should ask him, get in touch. Email me, Matt at Times. We're not going to ask him how he is. Ain't that one suggestion is that we say <laughs> start off with you well. I'm going to say keeping? we could think of a better We could probably think of a better one. Yeah, given that we've got, you we've know, got 24, 24 hours. Exactly. We've got 24 hours. Yeah. Andrew, that was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. We could do that again. Fine. Just us. Yeah. I think I think making it more like a sort of zoo format is definitely the way to go. Uh, what, but what, not well, a zoo format where we talk about GDP? Yeah, and Liam Fox. <laughs> <laughs> but with more sort of horns and sound yeah. effects, yeah. Executive producer Andrew Alexander uh, taking us through the best of the rest. Uh, Lara might be back next week. Frankly, we don't know. Lara, Patrick, somebody will be back. If not, it'll just be me and Andrew and anyone else we can find at times ready to pad things out. Uh, that brings us to the end of PMQs. I'm Pat. Uh, thank you for listening on the radio. Thank you for uh, watching along on the YouTube channel, which is now zooming out in a slightly weird way. Uh, up next, the dog that can smell newts. And we'll play the quiz, can you get to number 10? And you don't get that on the other side. Uh, this is Times Radio. Mariella Frostrup on Times Radio. Blur's Alex James is going to be joining us to preview the band's first studio album and gigs in eight years. Really Anna Murphy will be swishing in to bring us the latest in fashion news. And we're on the ground in India to hear why Bollywood movies are being banned in some parts of the country. All that plus.